Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Logitech Lytra Glow. This is a compact and affordable lighting solution that's designed for creators and streamers. And it's built by Logitech for Creators, which is a brand extension of Logitech that includes Logitech Blue microphones and Streamlabs. And essentially, it's designed to give you an affordable alternative to other key lights out there in a compact form factor and yet to have customization options in terms of lighting and brightness and color temperature and other things. It goes up to 250 max lumens and it has a color range of 2700 Kelvin to 6500. Controllable within Logitech's G-Hub software and also from buttons on the back of the device itself. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing the light as you can see it here with its included mounting system and talking to you about the various highlights and lowlights of it and showing you what it's like to use and also talking about my experiences with it because I've been using it put on top of my monitor which I'll show you in a minute and actually using it comparing it with other key light options that I have now this thing is powered by a USB-C cable that plugs into your PC which makes it really easy to use and I think that's going to be one of the main draws of this light is it not only delivers nice, easy on the eye lighting, but it also is conveniently set up with a simple monitor mounting system, a USB-C power directly from your PC, which means you don't have to plug it into a wall power supply, which obviously is fantastic. It also has a thread mount that you can mount it on other tripods and things, as you saw at the beginning, and I'll show you again in a second. And so it has all those options. It also is designed with Logitech's True Soft technology, it's designed to give you good lighting, which avoids harsh shadows and also gives you a radiant look if that's something you're after, but a flattering light that's also designed to be easy on the eye and to be able to be used all day long without taxing your eyes. So obviously that's an important point of it. If you're a streamer that likes to stream regularly to the camera, then obviously reducing the strain on your eyes is a very important part of that. So a simple setup as basic and it is a bit more controllable than that as well because in G-Hub, if you have Logitech gear, for example, it will work with Logitech G devices and dedicated G keys on those so you can assign things to control the brightness and color temperature on your keyboard so that you can adjust it throughout the day. So if you're using it for hours and hours, you have the option to do that. In the box itself, obviously you get the setup manual, you get the light itself and the USB cable for plugging in and connecting it up. It's really nice to have a lighting system that doesn't require to be plugged into the wall and the power supply. So that's obviously a bonus. It's USB-C to USB-A, so just plug it into your PC and it gets sufficient power from there to manage to give you that lighting that you need. What I've found, and what I'll show you in a minute, is that it gives a easy on the eye lighting that is not too harsh and surprisingly bright for such a small device because it is quite small as you can see from these shots as I'm just holding it in my hand it is not a massive key light so it's tiny in stature and also tiny on your wallet because it's not terribly expensive it comes in at around 59 pounds sterling 69 euros around that mark so it's not terribly expensive there are some slight downsides though I will go over. One of them is this monitor mount. I don't really like it. It's a very straight affair, as you can see there, and it's also extendable, so you can make it longer. The problem I've come across with my setup is the back of my monitor is curved. And actually, I tried it on two different monitors, and they were both curved at the back, and that results in a bit of a problem because you've got this straight mounting system, which basically doesn't play very nicely with a curved monitor and it's a bit of a fiddle but it is adjustable and it is possible to do so we'll show you that it does have a standard thread so that if you have your own tripod or mount system then you can use that so you can see here i've just got a tiny little manfrotto one that i'm going to use as demonstration purposes but if you happen to have a larger tripod or monopod setup then you can obviously use that as an alternative at the rear you'll also note there's a power button to turn it on and off and then brightness buttons and temperature buttons so you can easily adjust those from a hardware level without the software but you also have the option of using the g hub software so i'll show you that in a minute as well as using the g keys as i said if you program those up and then you can access and control those things really easily 
So what you're seeing so far is an affordable, compact system that does what it says on the tin. The main points, selling points here are that it's designed to focus mostly on delivering a really affordable lighting system that doesn't take up much room. So if your space is limited and you don't have room for massive key lights, you just want to put one on top of your monitor and get it near your webcam and have some flattering lighting for your face so that you have a nice look when you're on the camera and you're streaming and this is possibly it. Now with the mounting you'll see, as I was saying, that bracket on the back is completely flat which is a bit fiddly but it does have a nice hook that hooks over the monitor and then it's also adjustable. You can tilt it back and forth side to side and maneuver it into a position that will work for you so it's really easy to sort out and set up. And here I am within Logitech's G-Hub software. I'm using the Logitech Stream Cam now for reference. And I also have a single light on in the room, which is just the main room light, which is up there. It's not terribly bright, but you can see some of it on my face. I'm using the Stream Cam as the camera in OBS. And so when you go into Stream Cam settings, you can see that the camera's not available. So unfortunately you can't see that, but normally you'd see it in here. I have selected streaming as my mode just if you want to apply the same settings. And if you go into the light itself, you see there's some very basic settings in here. And again, the camera is not available. You can select your specific camera in the drop down, but because I'm using it on OBS, it won't show in there as well. You have the ability to turn the light on, obviously. I can turn it on now and you'll immediately notice a difference in lighting. And it's actually set to quite low at the moment. And if I crank it all the way up, you'll see just how bright it gets. It does get very bright and initially that's quite shocking but you can actually look at the light and it's not too obnoxious Now you probably won't be using it on this level of brightness because you can see it's essentially made my face look extremely pale and i can assure you that i'm not <laughs> not that pale even in the depths of winter but the same can be said if you whack the warmth all the way up it also goes very orange and obviously you need to play around with these settings you go the other way and you have a very blue light or white and that gives you a a very different look obviously the light above me is obviously influencing it as well so i might just quickly go and turn that off and you can just see the key light you're unlikely to do this to have just just the elytra glow as your source of lighting but i think it's an interesting demonstration of how bright it goes so you can see if i crank it all the way up and let's put the warmth about here that is probably still a bit too bright at least for this camera and in this position, you might want to offset it ever so slightly and move it around. But what you'll see is obviously it's also casting a lot of shadows into the room. So you do need some other lighting in the room, but it does demonstrate that it's very bright. Now, a couple of things that I don't like about this in the software here, I'm just going to turn the brightness down for a moment, is that there is no marker for what color temperature you're at. So although you have cool and warm as the options, it doesn't actually tell you the Kelvin representation. This isn't really a problem for this setup with the stream cam and the light, but if you're using a fancier setup and you want to set a specific color temperature on your camera, so for example, I usually use DSLR. I use the Lumix GH4 as my main webcam, and I've set a specific color temperature of 5,600 Kelvin on that. And that then allows me to get the good match between the lights and the camera to give a real world representation of what my skin tone's like and also the surroundings. On here, you only have a slider and there's no indication of what sort of level of Kelvin you're at. I probably, it's probably roughly in the middle, but if you put it too far one way, you end up being orange. And if you go too far the other way, you get that problem. This is problematic, I think, for the most part, actually, not only in representing your true skin tone, but also when you're using a green screen. So I'll show you that in a minute in how this light works with a green screen or doesn't. But it is a very simple setup in terms of the settings. It does give you the option to easily adjust the brightness up and down as you need to. And you also have a number of settings here. You can see bright cool blue for example cozy daylight which is a bit easier on the eye mild afternoon so you can obviously change these throughout the day this one is quite pleasant both on my face and on my eyes and then you can adjust between each of these so each of the each of them makes quite a significant difference and i think that the point that it's easy on the eye 
is a very important one but obviously if you crank it all the way up turn the brightness all the way up it becomes quite taxing on the eyes but it still does offer up a nicely diffused bit of lighting and with ease and the fact that you have the hardware controls also makes it accessible but you can use G Hub and then you can obviously go in and set G keys as well so this is part of it the other part I think is going to be the green screening because you might well be using this for chroma keying so I'm going to demonstrate some of that so here I am with a green screen behind me this is a very flat surface and I only have again the light above me and the tiny little Lytra glow is my sources and one of the problems you're going to have here is that you can see up here where my main light is there's a lot of light going on on the green screen and over here where there isn't much despite the Lytra glow sort of being pointed in this direction there's a lot of shadow and that's going to be one of the problems I'm going to deal with when applying a green screen filter to this but it is possible to do so to quickly go into filters and then so I'm playing around with the settings quite a bit and what I found is that it's very difficult to get the green screen taken away with the chroma filter without using other lighting both on the green screen and on me so the Lytra glow isn't really sufficient in order to do this at least not for my purposes so one of the things I've found is that playing around with the filters, as you can see now, because it's not very good, there's obviously a bit of distortion over here and around the very edges, is that the Lytra Glow just simply isn't bright enough. And because it's face onto me, it's got these shadows on the very sides. So I have found, for example, that if I turn on the two Elgato key lights that I have next to me, and the brightness on those, if you adjust that, you can see that's substantially better about about here-ish <laughs> my head's not perfect so you do need to play around with the filter settings a bit in order to get this right but that looks a lot cleaner like that and that's obviously quite a bit more lighting uh, on the sides but you can see just the effect that it has on the background you'll see a lot of fuzziness around here and that's because there's too much light in one area and it's too dark in the other so you need a lot of consistency with something like a green screen but for general use without a green screen it's a very nice little lighting system it gives a nice light into your face and a nice warmth to it an adjustable color temperature and all sorts of other things so not bad especially for the money a good entry into a usable lighting system obviously with the extra thread mounting you could use it for other things if you want to get into filming unboxings for example it might be a good lighting system for that and the fact it's easy to power and mountable makes it very appealing this has been the provoke prawn I hope you found this video useful thanks for watching this has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.